Hello everybody, welcome to Resident Evil Gaming, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to go through and give you a quick beginner's guide to being able to play Final Fantasy XIV online. Now, Final Fantasy, just so you know if, you're, if it's something that you're interested in, is completely free, up to level 60 on your job. Jobs are your classes, and you can play all your classes on one single character. The first thing you should know is that you have different data centers. Data centers determine what region you're connecting to, but also can kind of determine who you interact with. So if you're planning to play with a friend, I highly recommend that you select the same data center for your region. So I live in Europe, so I'm going to go for the European data center, and I'm going to go for light. And we just hit start. And as you can see, I've already got a character over here. Um, she's level 29 at the minute, but we'll create a new character just so that you can get a rough idea of the character creation screen. So, character creation in this case allows you to select from a bunch of different races. If you have some of the expansions, you'll have access to Hrothgar and Viera, which are lion people and rabbit people. If that's your proclivity, then I recommend getting the respective um, expansions. At the top you have here, these are your basic humans. Most races, by the way, have uh, primary and secondary races that you can choose. So if I choose here, and then hit confirm and go to the second page, I can go to Highlander or Midlander. I'm not going to go through all of these options, but I am just going to outline the general kind of information that you need to know. We have Elizin, which is your elves. We have Lalafell, which are little childlike people that live forever. Um, they're basically Satan though, so like, why would you pick this? Uh, Mikote, which are cat people. Rogadim, which are like fish people, I think. There are seafaring folk that live near um, coastlands and have big naval and fishing ports. Aura are... They're not dragon people, but they're close to dragon people. Like, they're like lizard half-dragon hybrids. If that's something that you're interested in, go on ahead and select that. And I'm gonna just show you the female variants for each of these just so you can get an idea of what sort of thing you're looking for and what you may prefer now I'm gonna go basic so I'm gonna go human male here uh -huh. for clans I'm gonna go for midlander uh -huh. so you can see all these options and this could be quite overwhelming but this is just character customization your customization options will appear in the top right in the bottom right, you can change what environment they're in. I recommend the default, because that will give you like a kind of clear base. Everything's relatively well lit, and you can see what you're working with. You can also change their clothing. Once you select your job, you can see them in their job clothing. And you can change their pose. So, we're going to change their height. Uh, we'll make him really tall. Uh... Make him really squishy. That was just the um, texture of the muscle face. We can go through and see what we really like. We're going to go with this one. Again, we're going to make him as pale as possible because that's me IRL. Uh, different hairstyles. I kind of dig that one to be fair. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Hair color, you've got quite the wide variety. Um, sadly, there's no color wheel so you can choose like your own specific brand of color but if you look on this kind of chroma key over here you can go to something that you like the look of so for example i like browns typically really dark brown so we'll go with that so it's kind of a reddish brown if you want something paler then you can go for these but these are mostly off whites this is the jawline so we can change how the jaw looks eye shape so we can choose upturn, downturn, harmonize, that sort of thing. I think that probably looks the best. This changes the size of the iris. I'm going to go with large because I like that big kind of anime vibe. Eye color, we'll go with white because why not? Eyebrows, nice and thick. Nose, nice strong Roman nose. I'm good with that. We, we're giving him kind of an evil vibe. Uh, lip color. That'll do. 
Uh, on the lip color, by the way, if you do want to go back, you can just select it over here. Um, there's dark and light variances, so we can choose none. We can go to dark. Uh, sorry, light, and then we can go to dark. And that's kind of like, like applying lipstick. For facial features, we can add different stuff, and we can keep them, or we can choose to remove them. I'm going to keep the, uh, I'm going to remove, keep that one. Move the cut across his face. Move that cut across his cheek. Keep the stash, keep the stubble, or the semi-beard. Tattoos, I'm not a big fan of tattoos, so I'm going to keep those off. Face paint allows you to apply a specific paint on their face, which is, you know, fairly self-explanatory. But then you can customize the color of this. So we're going to go for this, hit confirm, and then we'll go for a pink to add kind of like a blush. Just get some color in that face. For voice, these are your voice options. Uh, up the top, we have different actions that the character will make. So we've got angry, we've got calling out for people, we've got laughing, uh, nodding, shaking our head. That will probably do. Four will probably do. Uh -huh. Yeah, four will do. And then once you've done all that, you can just hit confirm. And then you can choose to save your appearance data. Uh -huh. This is complete f flavor text. Um, so we are just going to go for that. Um, these, again, is more flavor text. Basically, there's different gods in the game based on each day of the month. Day of the month? Each month. So, you can go through and just find something that your character fits. Um, you can also choose the god based on, like, their star sign based on what year they were born, or you can, or what month you were born, or you can choose it based off, what, like, what their job is to keep it thematic. So, Breaker of Worlds, God of Destruction, let's go with it. So, these are your jobs. At a certain level, I think it's level 15, you can change your job. So, you can go and pick up a different job and you can level that instead. So, if you're not finding one that you enjoy with, if you wait to level 15, you can go and get a completely different job and level that up instead. Um, one of the jobs that's not available here, because there are additional jobs that you can pick up, is Thief. And you can pick up Thief, which I believe becomes Rogue. Um... Because jobs can be leveled up essentially once you hit a certain level, which is usually level 40, it could be converted into a secondary job. So we've got Disciples of War, these are your melee or physical damage classes. And you can see that stuff. If we select our job in the bottom right for the clothing, we can see what outfits they'll get at roughly level 60. Or once they've completed their class quests. And then we have Disciples of Magic, so these are your spells and your uh, magic casters. We are going to go with an... Um, we're going to go with a Marauder, a guy with a big old axe. I'm just going to hit confirm. And then we can choose which um, world we would like to start. And some of them are starred, and I believe those give increased XP uh, for any new player playing on that world. We'll just hit select another. We're going to play on alpha because that's where I have my other character. And we're just going to dice roll. Hmm. Cobalt Weld. God damn it. Okay, we need a different name. You can use a name generator. I'm just going to take any name that it will let me have. Now, there are a lot of people with names in this game. Okay, so we'll add our own. Um. So we're going to go with Kit Weld. Um, Kit is a unisex name. And Weld because he has a big axe. So I'm going to skip the cutscene. I know people are going to be triggered by this. Um, but this is because one, I've seen it already. And two, I don't want to give you any spoilers. So you choose mouse and keyboard to start. If you're playing on PC, if you're playing on a controller, you can choose to do so. So this will be a lot of stuff that's very confusing to a new player. So I'm going to go through the UI and I'm going to explain some of the quest icons and stuff like that. So in the bottom left, we've got our chats. And here we can yell, shout, do your typical stuff. Uh, tell, I believe, is like whispers in World of Warcraft where you can tell somebody specifically something, but not to the group. Parties, if you're in a dungeon, say we'll just say it out in the open. Yell, we'll 
send it to as many people as possible in the vicinity. And free company is like your guild. So if you have a group of people that you raid with or that you group up with, you do free company to talk to your guild. Over here we've got these icons, so what do they mean? This icon here, also bound to C, will bring up your character armor and stuff. And if we go to classes slash jobs, you can see all the jobs that we can play. Quite overwhelming, but you can stick to just one until you get really good at it. Um, if you're not really enjoying that job and you think, oh, I'd really prefer being a mage or, oh, I'm a mage, but I'd really prefer being some kind of like warrior or melee, then you can opt to just change that. And you unlock them by just going to the respective trainers. This is your inventory slots down here. This would bring up your character stuff. Duty is mostly for quests. I haven't looked at logs. Oh yes, logs. So logs will are things that you can complete in the open world that will give you a short amount, like a small amount of XP for doing so. So the hunting log, when you're out in the open, you'll see creatures with a mark above their head. When you kill them, you'll get XP for that. If you want to access your system, uh, you can do it via this or you can hit escape. And then you can change your HUD layout. So if there's something that you don't like, and this is really confusing, I do understand that. So I'm trying to keep this fairly simple, but this is our minimap in the top right. Let's say we wanted a minimap down here so we could see it nice and easy. We're just going to sync it up to that bar, hit save, back out, and our minimap's on the bottom. And you can do that for any piece of your UI. So we're going to open up the actual map, press M, or you can click on this map. Now, this is the thing that people struggle with a lot when they first start playing the game. Just going to click this and drag it to open up a little bit further. These arrows indicate where you're going to go. The little blue text here, you can actually select and it will take you to the adjoining area. So let's say we want to go to the upper decks. We select this and then we come up into the upper decks here and it will always center on roughly where you're going. These little blue dots here, they're little teleport points. So if you unlock in a city all the teleport points, you can go to one of them and TP to any of them, which makes it obviously very helpful. If you've not been to an area, you'll see it's all blotted out. But we are getting back into the Ithra Plaza, so we're going to attune to the lower deck, lower deck Ethra, which is just behind us. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we've, we've been told off. We're trying to go over there too early. Quests, or at least side quests, will appear here with a, this golden icon above. And then we just hit accept. So we've accepted that quest. Our quest appears on the right, unless you change its location. And if you want to learn more, you can select it, and it'll open up your journal, which will give you essentially your quest log. Inside here, you can see how much experience, how much gold you're going to get, or gil, what you need to do, and where you need to go. And if you're ever confused on where you need to go, you can select the map icon, and it will take you directly to where they are. So it's coming to Limsa, Laminsa, and it's just over here. So we're going to speak to the lift attendant. Movement, by the way, is W, A, S, and D. And to rotate as I'm running, because otherwise I'd have tank controls like this, I'm just right-clicking and doing it that way. If you press S, you move slower going back. So if you're in dungeons and stuff, it might make more sense to run left or run right instead of using your uh, S key. So what I'm looking for right now is to find the class trainer and also the main quest so that I can show you those icons. So as you can see, if we speak to Badaran here, we've got this unique marker, what looks to be a comet on fire. And this indicates a main story quest. Final Fantasy XIV is very heavy on its story, so it's important to look for these quests so that you can progress. Typically speaking, I recommend people avoid the side quests and follow the main quest. This is because you'll get overleveled if you do all the side quests. And the main story is what really draws people to this game. So 
So this is one of the two types of questing that you'll engage with. Picking up items. Just right click to engage with the item and pick it up. Sometimes collecting items will begin a fight with a mob. But this is mostly seen with your class quests. Once you've completed a quest, you'll look for a quest giver with a little tick above his head. You right click and select hand over to hand over, or you can just drag and then hand over to complete. This is the Etherite Plaza. Again, we've got that main quest icon. We just right click the Etherite Plaza to attune to it. Every major city has one of these and it acts as the central hub. When you first begin, you may feel as though you're running a little bit slowly. You'll see on your taskbar, you've got this little icon here, which will increase your movement speed. And I missed a quest over here. So where we are headed now... ...is on the upper decks. But I'll show you the Aetherite Shard just to show you the quick travel. You just right click to attune to it and then you can TP to any of the other ones. Once you collect all the Aetherite Shards in a city, you'll sometimes unlock additional Aetherite Shards to be able to travel to. So we select this and then we can either select where we want to go on the board. But we've only got the Limsa Luminsa TP. And I believe up these steps, and if we check our map, select these steps, it will take us upstairs and our quest is over here. So yeah, this is the right way to go. There's another shard here, so we're just going to collect that. This icon here, by the way, is your character moving around. So if you're not sure whether you're orientated correctly, you can always just open up the map look at it and it will go transparent and then you can just kind of run around and figure out your way to your next objective and we're going to collect this etherite shard here and then we're going to go speak to the marauders different classes by the way will start in different cities so if you're playing with a friend it's important to choose a class that will go to the right location it will say in the bottom left when you select your job or class um it will say which location you're going to. So you will go to Lominsa Lominsa, or you will go to Gridania, or you will go to Uldar. Gridania is this lush green forest, and Uldar is a desert rife with treachery. So, if we look here, this guy has a little plus icon above his head. This means that you're going to unlock something. In most cases, when you're in a specific guild for a specific job, this will mean that you can unlock that. Now if I zoom into here and hover over this one, that's for Culinarian, which is a crafting skill. And I can't find it just yet, but other jobs will basically appear like this as well. If you're not high enough level to be able to unlock the job, then this will be red. So we're going to accept this to unlock our Marauder stuff. And speak to the guild master okay so now that we've spoke to the guild master which was a part of a class quest you can see that our class quest over here still has that little plus icon and i believe it stays that way so now let's say we need to go to where the marauder map slay wharf rats that's just outside in the middle of lanoska we can go to limsa Lominsa lower decks and then just run to our right. So we're going to do that. So we're going to go to the Aetherite Plaza. This TPing, by the way, is free. Um, it's completely free to TP around like this. 
do have a quest called Close to Home, which is a main quest. I typically complete my class quests first, just because my class quests will sometimes give you abilities and armor and will improve the overall feel of your class, which is what you're going to be doing 90% of the time. So if I said, so if I had to say that there was a thing to prioritize, I would say prioritize first your class quest and then prioritize your main quest. So these are the war threats and we're going to do a little bit of combat here so we can see our abilities. There's an attack with a potency of 150. Honestly, I could not tell you what potency is. I think it's just damage. When we right click to prep for combat and then we can run close. And once we run close, you can see that the combat, the little X disappears on our little ability there. So once we're close enough, we can use it. Now, these things over here that have conveniently spawned over here are called Fates. Fates will periodically appear and you can see they have a timer on them. They've also got a little bar. They're basically timed open world events. And the more that you complete them, the more gold and experience you get for participating. The way that combat works in this game is ever so slightly different to World of Warcraft. As you can see, this is a combo because on my bar, the maim glows after I've used Heavy Swing. Typically, there's an order that you should use your abilities. And we're going to kill more of these Lost Lambs just to show you how the fate works. Combat in Final Fantasy is a little bit more different to World of Warcraft. Basically, if you've seen AoE, you need to be stood outside of the AoE before it fills. Even if you step out after the fact, when the animation goes off, you'll still take damage. So it's important to step outside of the circle before the, anim before the animation even starts, so that you don't get caught in the middle of it. So we're leveling up quite quickly, and this is a little thing that they added to make progression a little bit easier. It's relatively quick to level up in this game. Unlike World of Warcraft, I don't like tabbing to target units. And this is because it typically cycles left to right. So let's say I wanted to target this war threat. It goes, I have to cycle all the way through. Once you do a fate, you'll get rewards, as we just noticed. And so for that fate, I got a little bit of gill and a little bit of experience. We need to kill two more ladybugs. Now the combat may look pretty slow at this point in the game. And that's because we have a long GCD. And GCD is your global cooldown. Basically, when I use an ability, so we'll just run over to this war threat. When I use my main ability, you see everything goes on cooldown. Anything that's on your GCD will go on cooldown when you use your ability. And you think that's going to be really boring and basically playing a turn-based game. And some people might agree. However, the more you level up and the more skills you get, the more off global cooldown abilities you get, which are abilities that can be used in between that. So you'll use your primary ability, this one, and then you might use two off global cooldowns to do a bit of damage, maybe apply some bleed. And then you would use maim to keep your combo up once the cooldown resets. And then you'd use more off global cooldowns and then you'd go back. And so you're kind of weaving in and out of using uh, GCDs and OGCDs. So our requests are up in the upper decks. But because we got some of those TP points, we're just going to TP straight to the Marauder's Guild from the Aetherite Plaza. I forgot to say earlier, but the one catch with TPing about, by the way, is that if you do it outside of the city, it will actually cost you. So if we were in middle of Noska and we selected Lim Solomosa and tried to TP over here, it would actually cost us Gil 
to do so. But since we're already inside the city and we use the Ethernet, we don't have such a problem. We can just TP straight across with no cost. So as you can see there, I unlocked the Berserk ability. As you complete your class quests, you'll unlock more abilities for your class. And I believe it culminates in getting your job armor. There is a something akin to a transmog system in this game. And what that basically means is you can equip different pieces of armor over your current armor to look different. So if we go down into the lower decks, we'll just look at some of the people down there and see what they've got equipped. So we can see this person has like a red mage vibe going on. This guy has a really cool axe, some really cool armor. And this is not typically what the armor would look like normally. This is something that they've chosen to add to themselves. This might be a piece of uh, clothing that you'd find in the shop because that looks very non-standard for this game. So yeah, fashion is a fairly big portion of this game, uh, as is RP. And if you're not sure what RP is, it's role-playing. RP is going into, like, sometimes they have um, fashion shows, sometimes they have nightclubs, and people just go there, they have a laugh, they have a good time, and it's just people pretending to be their character, enjoying the world as it was created through the eyes of their character. No different from d and I believe... That is everything that I should probably be able to teach you for now. This is because this game is quite expansive. There's quite a lot of things to do in the long run. Um, but basically, just to get you started, you know how to customize your UI. You know what Etherite plazas are for. You know what the little Etherite shards are for. Side quests look like this. Main quests have that little fiery icon. Unlocking quests and class quests have the little plus symbol next to it. And so now hopefully you should be able to navigate quite a bit and play quite a po big portion of the game. The one thing I haven't touched on is dungeons, trials, ultimates, slash savages. Dungeons are your typical low level um, dungeons where you go in, you clear a couple mobs and you go to the boss and you kill the boss and then you get loot. In Final Fantasy XIV, however... When you go into one of these dungeons, there's a bit of a narrative setup, there's something that's going on outside, and so you'll have a story going into the dungeon, and the dungeon is themed thematically. Trials is for... Well, to not get into spoiler territory, Trials are a bit closer to raids, although they are closer to World of Warcraft's 10-man raids, or lower. Um, they're a little bit more difficult than your standard dungeon and typically you're fighting just one boss savages and ultimates are like they are your full scale rate um i can't remember if it's savages or ultimates but one of them is exceptionally difficult i believe it's savages um and so you see people progging those but typically your savages and ultimates also have story and narrative elements that are related to the world, so everything ties into this narrative experience. And that's one thing that I haven't shown you so far. And that's because the narrative experience in Final Fantasy XIV is such a big portion of the game that I don't want to spoil it for you. Everything from the beginning to being introduced to characters to slowly building your character up in this world and developing renown and things like that, um, and the trials that you have to face. All of this is something that you should experience for yourself and it is a massive draw for this game a lot of people say that this is one of the best final fantasy stories which is saying something because there's a lot of people who really love final fantasy 7 uh final fantasy 10 and things like that so i'd recommend just hopping in giving it a try seeing if you like it or not if you don't that's fine maybe this narrative isn't for you um just be aware that the base game, A Realm Reborn, is relatively slow to go through. As you can see, I leveled up pretty quick. I'm at level 6 already. However, getting to Heaven's Ward and beyond, um, some people really struggle reaching there. And so, maybe something a little bit faster paced for an MMO would be a bit better. But this is my recommendation for Final Fantasy XIV. I hope this is a decent enough beginner guide to get you started, and on your feet anyway. Um, so yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace and take care.